case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In 1954, the landmark case of Brown v. Board of Education saw the U.S. Supreme Court declare racial discrimination in public education unconstitutional. However, the question of how to effectively implement school desegregation remained unresolved. To find an appropriate solution, the court invited the Attorney General of the United States and Attorneys General of several states to present their views. While progress had already been made in some communities, the court recognized that local school problems would require varied solutions. As a result, the cases were remanded to the original courts, which were given the primary responsibility for assessing and solving these local problems. The decision held significant importance nationwide, but meaningful integration of public schools did not truly occur until after the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The lower courts were guided by equity principles in effectuating decrees, prioritizing both public and private needs. School authorities had to promptly comply with the Brown 1 decision, while local courts determined whether good faith implementation had been achieved. Throughout the transition period, courts took various administrative challenges into consideration and retain jurisdiction. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class. 